Revealing the secret of Michael Jackson's final days. He is a part of my childhood memories. The day Michael died, the TV news was on from morning to afternoon, and for many days after that, it was all about his death. From that time until now, after many years, I still cannot believe that a person like him could die so suddenly. He had a great life but also many tears, suffering, scandals full of controversy associated with his private life, and the terrible disease lupus erythematosus. This video will tell you about Michael Jackson's most authentic memories and revealing the secret of Michael Jackson's final days. Michael Jackson was born Michael Joseph Jackson on August 29, 1958, in Gary, Indiana, to Catherine and Joseph Jackson. Michael was the eighth of ten children in the Jackson family, which included his older siblings Rebby, Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, Latoya, Marlon, Randy, and Janet. His father, Joseph Jackson, worked as a crane operator at U.S. Steel and was a part-time musician who had ambitions of becoming a professional performer. Catherine Jackson, Michael's mother, was a homemaker and a devout Jehovah's Witness who nurtured her children's talents and provided a loving, supportive environment. Growing up in a modest home in Gary, a city known for its industrial backdrop and economic challenges, Michael's early environment was one of hard work and determination. Despite their financial struggles, the Jackson family remained close-knit, and their collective support and encouragement played a crucial role in Michael's early development as an artist. Michael's musical journey began at a very young age. He was exposed to music early on, as his father was an amateur guitarist who often played at home. Michael's older brothers, Jackie, Tito, and Jermaine, were already involved in music, forming a group called the Jackson Brothers. Michael's exceptional talent became evident when, at the age of six, he began performing with his brothers in local talent shows and clubs. Michael's official entry into the music world came when he joined the Jackson Five in 1964. Initially, the group consisted of Michael and his older brothers, with Michael, at just six years old, taking on the role of lead singer. The group's energetic performances and Michael's remarkable vocal ability quickly gained attention. Their early performances were a mix of Motown hits and original songs, and Michael's stage presence and vocal talent were already evident, setting the stage for their future success. The Jackson 5's formation was a significant turning point in Michael's early life. Initially performing locally, the group's big break came when they signed with Motown Records in 1969. Motown, led by Barry Gordy, recognized the group's potential and signed them to a record deal. The Jackson 5's debut single, I Want You Back, released in October 1969, was a massive hit, reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100. The success of this single, followed by others like ABC and The Love You Save, catapulted the Jackson 5 to national stardom and marked the beginning of Michael's rise as a major performer. The success of the Jackson 5 also brought significant changes to Michael's life. As a young star, Michael was thrust into the limelight and experienced the pressures of fame from an early age. Despite his youth, he quickly adapted to the demands of a professional career, showcasing a level of discipline and talent that set him apart from his peers. Michael Jackson's solo career took flight with the release of his fifth studio album, Off the Wall, in 1979. The album marked a significant departure from his earlier work, showcasing a more mature sound that blended pop, rock, funk, and soul. Produced by Quincy Jones, Off the Wall featured hits like Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, which earned Jackson his first Grammy Award, and Rock With You both of which topped the charts. The album's innovative production and Jackson's electrifying performances solidified his status as a solo superstar and set the stage for his future endeavors. Released in 1982, Thriller is arguably the pinnacle of Michael Jackson's career and remains one of the most iconic albums in music history. The album produced a record-breaking seven top ten singles, including Billie Jean, Beat It, and the title track Thriller. The music video for Thriller, directed by John Landis, revolutionized the industry with its cinematic approach and elaborate dance routines. The album itself became the best-selling album of all time, earning numerous awards, including a record-breaking eight Grammy Awards in 1984. Thriller not only cemented Jackson's place in music history but also changed the landscape of the music industry. Following the success of Thriller, Jackson continued to push boundaries with his next two albums, 
Bad, 1987, and Dangerous, 1991. Bad produced several hit singles, including Bad, The Way You Make Me Feel, and Smooth Criminal. The album's accompanying world tour was one of the most successful of its time. Dangerous, with its fusion of new jack swing and pop, also achieved significant commercial success, producing hits like Black or White, Remember the Time, and In the Closet. Both albums further solidified Jackson's reputation as a pioneering artist in the music industry. Michael Jackson was not only known for his musical achievements but also for his humanitarian efforts. He supported numerous charitable causes and organizations throughout his career. His 1985 single We Are The World, recorded with other leading artists under the USA for Africa banner, raised millions of dollars for famine relief in Africa. Jackson's commitment to philanthropy extended to his charity work, including the Michael Jackson Burn Center for Children and contributions to causes such as HIV, AIDS research and children's hospitals. His dedication to helping others showcased his compassion and desire to make a positive impact on the world. Michael Jackson's live performances were legendary for their energy, creativity, and spectacle. His 1983 performance of Billie Jean during the Motown 25. Yesterday, today, Forever Television Special introduced the world to the moonwalk, an iconic dance move that became synonymous with his name. His bad and dangerous world tours were notable for their elaborate stage designs and innovative choreography, setting new standards for live performances. The History World Tour, 1996-1997, became the highest-grossing concert tour of all time, demonstrating Jackson's unparalleled ability to captivate audiences worldwide. Throughout his life, Michael Jackson faced numerous personal struggles and health issues that profoundly affected him. From a young age, the pressures of fame and the demands of his career took a toll on his physical and mental well-being. Michael suffered from vitiligo, a skin condition that causes loss of pigmentation, which led to widespread public scrutiny and speculation about his changing appearance. This condition, along with lupus, another autoimmune disease, contributed to his physical health challenges. Michael also dealt with severe pain and injuries throughout his career. One notable incident occurred in 1984 when he was filming a commercial for Pepsi. During the shoot, a pyrotechnic malfunction caused severe burns to his scalp. This incident marked the beginning of a long battle with chronic pain, leading to an increased reliance on pain medication. The pressures of his career, combined with these health issues, often left Michael feeling isolated and misunderstood. Despite his immense success and wealth, Michael Jackson faced significant financial difficulties in the later years of his life. His extravagant lifestyle, coupled with costly legal battles and declining record sales, led to mounting debt. Michael's lavish spending on his Neverland Ranch, a 2,700-acre property complete with amusement park rides and a zoo, became emblematic of his financial mismanagement. In 2008, facing foreclosure on Neverland Ranch, Michael entered into a joint venture with Colony Capital LLC to save the property. This move, while preserving his beloved estate, underscored the severity of his financial problems. Michael's financial woes were compounded by his inability to generate the same level of income he once enjoyed, leading to increased stress and anxiety about his future. Michael Jackson's relationships, both personal and familial, were often fraught with difficulty. His relationship with his father, Joseph Jackson, was particularly strained. Joseph's strict and often abusive disciplinary methods left lasting scars on Michael. While Joseph's push for excellence helped propel Michael to stardom, the emotional and physical abuse he endured caused deep-seated trauma that affected him throughout his life. Michael's romantic relationships were also marked by challenges. He was married twice, first to Lisa Marie Presley, daughter of Elvis Presley, and later to Debbie Rowe, with whom he had two children. Both marriages ended in divorce, and Michael's personal life continued to be a subject of intense media scrutiny. His relationships with his children, while loving, were also impacted by his fame and the controversies surrounding him. The loss of loved ones had a profound impact on Michael Jackson. The death of his friend and fellow pop icon, Princess Diana, in 1997 deeply affected him. 
Michael admired Diana for her humanitarian work and felt a personal connection to her struggles with fame and media scrutiny. Her tragic death left him heartbroken and further highlighted the pressures and dangers associated with being in the public eye. Another significant loss was that of James Brown, one of Michael's musical idols, who passed away in 2006. Michael often cited James Brown as a major influence on his music and performance style. The loss of such a pivotal figure in his life and career was deeply felt. Additionally, the passing of close friends and collaborators, such as choreographer Michael Peters and actress Elizabeth Taylor, added to his sense of grief and loss. A life full of glory and storms passed, but when it came time to end Michael Jackson still did not have peace, even his death itself was a topic that people discussed over and over again for many years. The final days of Michael Jackson's life were marked by a mix of anticipation and anxiety as he prepared for his highly anticipated comeback tour, This Is It. The tour, intended to revive his career and address his financial issues, was scheduled to begin in July 2009. Rehearsals were intense, and Michael was reportedly under significant stress to deliver a flawless performance. His father was too dictatorial, so Michael Jackson suffered from mental illness and he had to take sleeping pills when thinking about his painful childhood. Many people appear very happy and successful, but they cannot overcome their unhappy childhood and they cannot overcome their obsession. People with happy childhoods use that happiness to heal their whole lives. People with painful childhoods will use their whole lives to heal their childhoods. Tragically, on June 25, 2009, Michael Jackson died from acute propofol and benzodiazepine intoxication at his home in Los Angeles. His physician, Dr. Conrad Murray, was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter for administering the drugs that led to Michael's death. The news of Michael's passing sent shockwaves around the world, prompting an outpouring of grief from fans and fellow artists. His death marked the end of an era and left a lasting void in the music industry. According to Dr. Conrad Murray's testimony, he administered Propofol, an anesthetic typically used during surgeries, to help Michael Jackson sleep through the night. Propofol, a powerful sedative, is known for its rapid onset and short duration of action, making it suitable for inducing unconsciousness during medical procedures. However, using it outside of a controlled medical environment, particularly for something as routine as sleep, is highly controversial and dangerous. Murray's decision to use propofol in this manner highlights a critical ethical and medical dilemma, raising questions about the boundaries of medical practice and patient care. In the last two months of his life, Michael Jackson's mental health deteriorated to the point where he could not sleep without medical intervention. His insomnia was severe, likely exacerbated by the stress and pressure of preparing for his upcoming This Is It tour. Jackson's inability to sleep led him to seek increasingly drastic measures, culminating in his reliance on propofol, administered by Dr. Murray. This desperate situation underscores the tragic irony of Jackson's life. While he was a global icon adored by millions, he struggled with profound personal and health issues behind the scenes. Following Michael Jackson's death, Dr. Conrad Murray was immediately handcuffed and charged with the manslaughter of the King of Pop. This dramatic turn of events brought a sense of justice and closure to many of Jackson's fans and family members, who were devastated by his untimely death. The public's response to Murray's arrest was a mixture of relief and outrage, reflecting the deep emotional connection many felt with Jackson and their desire for accountability. Despite the charges against him, Dr. Murray maintained that he had acted following his professional duty and Jackson's wishes. He argued that he had used Propofol to help Jackson sleep, believing it to be a safe and effective solution. Murray's defense rested on the claim that he had not intended to harm Jackson and had only sought to provide the care his patient requested. This stance placed Murray in direct conflict with the accusations against him, complicating the legal proceedings and the public's perception of his role in Jackson's death. Murray's insistence that he had done the right thing and served his client's wishes well was met with skepticism. He argued that his decision to administer propofol was justified, given Jackson's desperate need for sleep. Murray's claim that Jackson had begged him for help painted a picture of a deeply troubled man seeking any means to alleviate his suffering. 
This narrative shifted some focus from Murray's actions to Jackson's state of mind, adding a layer of complexity to the case. Throughout the trial, Murray denied all accusations related to his involvement in Jackson's death, refusing to cooperate with the prosecution. His non-cooperative stance frustrated the jury and impeded the investigation, making it difficult to establish a clear narrative of events leading to Jackson's death. This obstruction highlighted the challenges in prosecuting cases involving medical malpractice and the administration of controlled substances. In a shocking revelation, Murray claimed that Michael Jackson was a drug addict who had begged him to prescribe medication to help him sleep. This assertion painted Jackson in a tragic light, suggesting that his struggles with addiction and insomnia were more severe than previously understood. Murray's defense strategy relied heavily on this portrayal, attempting to shift some responsibility for Jackson's death onto the singer himself. The defense lawyer for Dr. Murray put forth the theory that Michael Jackson had taken his own life by injecting himself with an overdose of propofol. This controversial claim aimed to exonerate Murray by suggesting that Jackson's death was a result of his actions, not Murray's negligence. The defense even requested the exhumation of Jackson's grave to prove their point, a move that was deemed unnecessary and highly invasive. While the defense's theory was bold, the prosecution had its methods for proving the charges against Dr. Murray. Two leading propofol experts were called as witnesses, Dr. Paul White, known as the father of propofol, and Dr. Step Share, who wrote the drug's instructions and warnings. Both experts testified that propofol should not have been used in the manner it was, highlighting the risks and potential for fatal outcomes when used improperly. The experts also revealed that Michael Jackson had been using other sedatives, lorazepam and midazolam, almost every night in the last two months of his life. This combination of drugs pointed to a complex and dangerous dependency on multiple medications to achieve sleep, underscoring the severity of Jackson's insomnia and the risks he was willing to take to find relief. Dr. Murray's defense argued that he was trying to wean Jackson off his addiction by prescribing a low dose of propofol, 25 milligrams, sufficient to help Jackson sleep but not intended to harm him. This defense highlighted Murray's alleged intent to manage Jackson's dependency in a controlled manner. However, the prosecution countered that Murray had failed to manage the drug properly, leading to the fatal outcome. Law enforcement officials charged Murray with involuntary manslaughter on February 8, 2010. In late 2011, he was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter and held without bail to await sentencing. Murray was sentenced to four years in prison but was released after one year and 11 months. The aftermath of Michael Jackson's death was filled with legal battles over his estate and continued public fascination with his life and legacy. His passing not only highlighted the complex and often tragic aspects of his life but also reinforced his immense impact on music and popular culture. Michael Jackson's life was a blend of unparalleled success and profound sadness. His struggles, legal battles, financial difficulties, and the pressures of fame painted a complex picture of a man who, despite his immense talent and achievements, faced significant challenges. The sad news that punctuated his life serves as a poignant reminder of the often unseen burdens carried by those in the public eye. When Michael was alive, the press constantly slandered him and always aimed at him with unreasonable accusations. But when he passed away, the press showed their grief. It's ridiculous for the human heart. Michael Jackson always tried to bring the message of peace, and people loving each other through charity work. Sorry Michael Jackson, until now we still can't build a better world. Make a better place for you and me.